So, hello, my name is Jussi Adler Olsen. I'm coming from Denmark. I'm writing thrillers. Some call it crime stories, but it's really thrillers. Something a little different. Uh, you may be not know of it, but I'm the best-selling author in Europe, compared to all of yours too. That means I sell millions and millions every year. Hopefully because it's good. I hope you think that too. Here in Britain, we had uh, five books public uh, publicated in, uh, in Penguin. The Q series about, well, a police officer, but quite strange one who only wants to get sacked, thrown out of the core. And he tries a lot to do it, but it, it's not really successful. It's a team that you haven't seen before. Uh, there's a sidekick called Assad, who's a wisecracker. Uh, lots of camel jokes. It's quite full of humor, the series, and maybe that's why it's so successful, one never knows. Then I also made three standalones, and the first one, The Alphabet House, is now being uh, published in, in, in England uh, and Britain. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is sort of taken from my own childhood because I was brought up in mental hospitals as a son of a doctor, I have to say, a psychiatrist. And there I met all the crazy people in the world you can ever think of. Murders and so forth. One of my best, best friends was a murderer. He killed his wife. And uh, from very early in my childhood, I learned that good and evil is very well combined in all of us. The Alphabet House is sort of a British story. Two British pilots are being shot down during the Second World over Germany. Now they have to flee. So they do the dumb thing and fleeing into a Lazarus train where only mental patients are, coming from the SS Corps. And they are being put into a Lazarus deep down in the south part of Germany. One speaks German, the other not. So the two British pilots can't communicate with each other. And uh, there are a lot of others who are not really sick. So it's, it's a terrible story. You will love it simply. Uh, I will not tell how it goes with the two pilots, but uh, being British, you ought to read it yourself, right? Uh, the crime scene in Denmark is now taking over the Scandinavian scene. It's on pure time, I could say. So goodbye, Hakon, Nessa and uh, Arne and all of you, which I love, of course, very dearly. Uh, it's, it's different in so many ways, the Danish crime stories, because we are like the Latinos of uh, Scandinavia. We were the Vikings, not the other ones. We were the one who killed only to get warm, you know. And um, therefore, you haven't, seen, you haven't seen teams like that before, uh, the ones I'm writing about. Uh, the Q team is maybe the strangest team ever, ever existed, because none of them are really, really police officers. They are just, you know, well, helping our main guy a little. Karl Merck is called. Merck, that means dark. And Merck was also the name of the, the killer I knew when I was a child. So that's a coincidence. I bring a lot of uh, uh, misuse of power into my stories, which are political, of course, like anything in Denmark. Uh, and uh, I don't believe in authorities so much, so it's a little too frank, maybe, for what's normal in the Scandinavian crime scene. But it seems like foreign persons like that very much. It's quite exotic in many ways. But don't read crime and thriller stories anymore because I'm so afraid of being inflated uh, of plots and uh, storylines and how to tell it. So I'm, I'm reading other stuff now. But I look forward to read the Scottish ones uh, you, when I'm retired, not before. I do write things completely different uh, in my opinion. Uh, you have to see yourself. Uh, the standalones are uh, about misuse of power too. It's, it's uh, international political thrillers uh, going on in Washington, in Indonesia, and wherever. So, uh, tempted to write something different. Well, I do write different stuff. I'm many times being asked, couldn't you be tempted to, to write something different, not crime and thriller stories? You know, you could call it exciting stories. 
And this is really the main line of literature throughout yeah, all times. Uh, if you see the Bible, it was a thriller. Did Abraham actually want to kill Isaac? Or what about Moses? Could he enter the Red Sea without being killed? It's thrillers. You want to see what's going on in the end, right? Old stories, old timers like Victor Hugo and the Miserable and so forth. It's all about who did it, why did they be that harsh to me, and how can I take my revenge? So this is standard literature, and most of, of my stories are quite standard literature. The Q series is maybe the longest project ever made in the history of crime stories. Uh, from the first moment I knew that this would be a story of 5,000 pages. So every book, book is sort of a chapter. And there's, uh, you know, all the stories are being glued together throughout with plots. So you have real plot lines throughout for the main characters from page one and until page 5,000. This is a project. You couldn't know in the start whether it would succeed or not. It succeeded, I can tell you. And uh, I had to write the synopsis, of course, for the three main characters of the long story. And later on, I make the synopsis for the cases in each chapter, so to speak, in each book. So I, I knew quite a lot, and uh, I'm a former publisher, so uh, I know what it takes, I mean, to make 5,000 pages work well. But the difference between the standalones of, uh, and Q-series is, of course, that my standalones, it was taking place all over the world. And the Q-series, in Denmark mostly, it's not that funny researching only Denmark. It was much more funny to go to Indonesia and reduct every expense in tax. So, <laughs> but I love to, to be with, uh, in my own country and I love to produce a series that actually make you see Denmark as something you ever, ha you hadn't ever believed could be like that. Well, we tried to get tickets but they were all sold out very quickly uh, and we came up on spec to um, sit for an hour and a half for returns and my wife said if we get one ticket you're in and I'll go for a walk so I get a ticket and uh, I think I was sort of second last in and last in was my wife she got one at the end so that was great that was great and we met a nice woman from Denver who'd come all the way over to see him she was waiting in the queue in front of us so it was, it was brilliant last minute it's a pity it was in such a small venue because I think he could have filled a, an auditorium I thought it was super it's so light-hearted but deep at the same time which is quite clever uh, and his characters have got a lot of resonance and he, he was great putting the responsibility for um, his characters onto the audience and um, to say it's all in you you know I'm writing about it and I can cope with it but you know you you out there you've got you've got the bad mad, mad minds if you like you know you've got all that danger in you which I thought was very clever and nobody's ever done that before so that was audience participation we all live with that fear now these, these two films, that's where I found them, and that's because we only discovered them in March, um, and uh, so that was, that's why I bought them, and my son gave me uh, this one, uh, The Keeper of Lost Causes, uh, and I'm going to read now, so we're doing it in reverse, we're seeing the films and reading the books, which is quite common now, because you see a lot of things on television, and it stimulates your interest in reading it. That's the modern way of doing it, I think, isn't it? I think it's the characters more than anything else. The, the principal characters are awful important in the book. And Mirk and his pal, this chap from the Middle East, not really explained, who is very, very clever and, and protects Mirk and, and takes him away from the violence and gives him a different aspect whether it's his, his teaching, Islamic teaching, whatever it would be. And you don't expect that in Denmark because um, they're very open, but they're very insular at the same time. So there's a contradiction in Denmark as well. Um, so I would say it's the characters. And it's the characters in most books, like Ian Rankin or Rebus or whatever. You know, you think, oh, I'm going to read that. And the other characters become kind of incidental, apart from Siobhan, his assistant, and, and the Rebus ones. So I think that, that would be my answer to you. That, um, the characters are awful important and people will hang on to that. And the same with Henning Mankell, you know, with Volanda. 
uh, and so forth. You know, everybody knows Verlander, and you forget a wee bit about Manko, and you forget he's a. You'll pick out a couple of characters that will support them, uh, but I think that's the way I would read it anyway. That's my analysis, for what it's worth.